As many of you know, I've been involved with a nonprofit by the name of Hands for Others H4O for the last two and a half years. And so as I was looking to do a senior project, I was kind of torn between doing something for that, uh, for my love of philanthropic work, but at the same time, as I'm going to be a business econ major in college, do something in that regard. And I guess be careful what you wish for. I got my wish, I got both of them, but it ended up sending me in about the, the furthest place there is in the world from Santa Barbara uh, to Africa. And so I think the best way for me to really relate to you what I saw in Africa, what my experience was like, is to talk about dreams. And it might sound cliche, but when I think of dreams, I think of the American dream. And I can't speak on behalf of everyone here in this room, but the typical American wants to be successful at whatever, ends, whatever they end up pursuing. They want to have a family, they want to have kids, they want to have a nice home, they want to retire. And that's my dream, and uh, that's the American dream. But what I was able to get a glimpse of in these communities in Africa is the African dream. And what I realized is that women and children in Africa will walk hours upon hours to go to a lake, a river, a muddy little hole with water in it, and then gather that water and bring it back to in their town and then drink it and get sick from it. And so as I was looking at this, I realized that the African dream is essentially a hopeless dream. Uh, because they have no hope in that. There's nothing they can do because each day, every day, they have to walk you know, up to six hours to get this water. And it's, it's heartbreaking for me because, you know, I have dreams of college. I have dreams of, you know, what, every, I mean, some incredible things for my future, I hope. And yet for them, you know, they're so tied down by uh, getting this water. And, you know, as you can look here, uh, the water sources they're getting their water from are water that we could never drink, let alone bathe in. And as I can say firsthand, I saw several different water sources and I would never even think about putting my hand in that water or touching that water uh, because it was so disgusting. And yet I was able to see what can happen to these communities when they're given a sustainable access to clean water. And I was able to take a look at this from an economic perspective. So when, they, when, a, when a whole village of three to 5,000 people goes from having that for forever, for walking hours upon hours to get that, to having this, it completely changes everything for them. And so what I was able to do is, near my senior project, a typical day for me was to wake up early in the morning, struggle to find something reasonable to eat. Uh, I love Africa. I do not love the African food very much. I'm not a fast food guy, but I would have given anything for there to be a McDonald's there. <laughs> uh, but then after that, it's uh, driving to, out to these villages, and I was able to see them in three different stages. Now, the first stage is the before, uh, the before stage where they're walking to get that dirty water and then drinking it and then you know, being chronically ill from it. And the other stage was to see a celebration of when the taps are literally getting turned on when for the first time in their lives they're being able to drink clean water. And that was the first time in their lives they'd actually ever seen clean water. So it was really humbling for me to be able to witness that. This picture here is actually uh, me at this uh, celebration, uh, Bukakabo Safe Water Project in Uganda. And then the third phase I was able to see villages in is, uh, when, is the after. When they have had <coughs> clean water for a year and I was able to interview the community leaders, uh, people in the village, and just see what had, how their life has changed. And I think this school was probably the most touching uh, experience for me as I was able to talk to the principal and say, well, just because this school has had uh, clean water for over a year now. And I was able to ask him, you know, what has this meant for your school? And he said, well, before we had clean water, it was not uncommon for about half of my school's population to be too sick to even come to school. And he says, and now that we have clean water, with the exception of a few absences, I mean, every school has a few absences, even Laguna, <laughs> uh, each day. Uh, with the exception of a few absences, they're all here. And as you can see, it's a really big school. And it would it just, it almost, 
uh, you know, really moved my heart to, to be able to stand up there in front of the kids and think, what if, what if half of them were not there? And so those are the three stages. Uh, but I'd like to get to a little more of what exactly uh, I would, uh, other, other stuff I was doing there. So you get up in the morning, you find something to eat, and then you would, I was staying with, uh, uh, it was through the nonprofit I'm involved with, HFRO, but we were with, on the ground with uh, our partners, Water Missions International, and we were staying with the in-country director there and their staff, as well as uh, my parents accompanied me on uh, this trip. And uh, we would drive out to these villages, and you'd say, well, how far are the villages? And they'd give it to you in kilometers, and you'd say, that's really helpful. And uh, <laughs> you'd have to kind of translate in your mind, uh, what, what does this really mean? And then you'd get it, and you'd be like, oh, that's pretty close. And it turns out that driving on a Kenyan road 20 miles is, uh, takes a lot longer than it would here. Um, I just, I, the images that uh, you know, Parker and Austin and Connor showed of those roads in Catalina, those would have been very nice. Uh, because you just up and down and side to side and you're crossing your fingers, don't have the car break down. And uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Uganda, actually, uh, the villages were around Lake Victoria. And so we had to go to them by boat. And uh, I'm not kidding you, it was this little dinky canoe. And only in Africa you'd find this, but it was a 10 horsepower motor powering the boat. <laughs> and so uh, that would take quite a while to get to these villages. And then uh, you, uh, we'd often see two to three, even four sometimes in a day, uh, villages, uh, just all different stages. And uh, towards the end, uh, you know, it was, it was just incredible because I was able to almost pinpoint exactly you know, what stage these villages were at. And, uh, but uh, I think what really blew my mind is how different the villages were, those who don't have clean water compared to those who do. And I think two things I took away from this uh, the most is first is uh, how truly blessed we are here. Uh, since birth, I've had access to clean water. I've never known anything different. And yet in Africa, they say water is life because they've never known anything different except for dirty water. And uh, I think the second thing I took away from this is that and this is a passion of mine. Uh, I've been involved with HRO for two and a half years, and I certainly plan to, uh, to stay involved throughout college. And, uh, you know, my, I really love this philanthropic work, and I've loved business and economics, and uh, being able to see those working together is something that excites me. And uh, quite honestly, I'm sold on the process. So, thank you. Um, well, often they have rivers running through uh, the villages, or and uh, some of the Ugandan villages. It was Lake Victoria itself. Um, it's kind of a misconception. Uh, a lot of many of us think that they don't have water, but usually the problem is that they have access to water. Just it's it's horrendously dirty, and so uh, what uh, we do is we purify the water. Yeah. Um. How many countries did you have a chance to go to any other country in Africa besides Uganda? Uh, yes, we were in uh, Uganda and Kenya on this trip. Yeah. Yeah. Was the water uh, dirty from um, a trash or a bacterial standpoint, or in, it was it from a human waste standpoint, or animal, or all of the above? Well, yeah, all of the above. I mean, the cattle shares the water that the people drink from. And, uh, you know, that's where their waste goes to often. Uh, it was not uncommon to see dead animals and uh, other just disgusting stuff in the water. And uh, so certainly, uh, there, on two levels, it was bacteria-wise, the water is just horrendous. And then also, I mean, it's totally brown, too. So with what you're working on, is it, are you going hand-in-hand -hand with um, education of dragging animals out and, and not draining sewage in? And yeah, and that's, and that's part of the process, and unfortunately, I don't have time to go through the whole process this morning, uh, but it's, uh, there's a lot more that goes into it than just giving the water treatment system. It's uh, 12 months before community development and uh, setting up a water uh, district board in the villages, and then uh, as well as uh, staying with the villages for a couple years after as well to make sure all that gets taken care of. So is that how your economic, you, I see how that fills your philanthropic interest. The economic interest, is it the process of 
how does it fulfill your economic interest? Well, I think what I was able to see is that water is the key to breaking the poverty cycle. Uh, because when you have women and children spending uh, six hours a day uh, gathering water, children can't go to school, women can't work. And so when they have water given to them in the center of their community, and they're not sick anymore, it allows the whole community to thrive, basically. Um, how many different villages did you visit? Um, well, let's see, I was there for about 14 days total, and we'd usually see about three a day, uh, two to three a day. Um, every day varied, so uh, probably 30, no, 30 to 40 villages. for the water processing? Was it government funded? Or? Actually, the villages, uh, most of the villages we visited were funded by the nonprofit I'm involved with, um, HRO, and then the others uh, were funded by our partners, Water Missions International. I've seen a statistic that more people in Africa have access to cell phones than clean water. Did you observe that? <laughs> First hand, yes. They don't have electricity either, and yet they have cell phones. <laughs>